Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head up to Norway but this beer is also half English, another collaboration beer. Both of the breweries involved here you've seen me review numerous things from over the last few years and they're both quite well known when it comes to the hazy New England IPAs as well and it's one of those that we're going to look at today. So for this review we are going to return to Oslo, Norway's capital and we're having a look at another beer from Amundsen Bryggery and this is one that they've done in collaboration with the Wylam Brewery who come from Newcastle in the northeast of England. So this beer is called the Incendiary Confusion and it comes in at 7.5% ABV, a double dry hopped New England IPA. This one was released on the 22nd of November 2019 through the Tilfelig sortiment previously known as the Small Partiers in Seestenbelage here in Sweden. So um, yeah, as I've said before, I've had very good experiences with both of these breweries. I tried a lot of the, the Wylam beers when I was in uh, when I was in England doing my teacher training and uh, Amundsen Bregory of course we get things quite regularly through he uh, here in Sweden I get some of them across in Copenhagen as well and they were fairly easy to get a hold of in Scotland at home too so um, yeah always cool to return to this brewery to try new IPAs and if you are interested in Norwegian craft beer Amundsen are definitely a good place to start off and likewise Wylam are a very good place to start off when it comes to English beer as well so um, yeah looking forward to this one cool to see these guys collaborate together and hopefully they've produced a nice beer and I hope you guys enjoy my take on it as well. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done both from Amundsen Brewery and from Wylam Brewery. No doubt I'll add more to both of those lists in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geo geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for both the Norwegian beers that I've reviewed and another one for the English beers. This beer will appear in both of those lists since it is half and half and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about the Amundsen Brewery first off then, since these guys are the home brewery, on to my brewery notes. So Amundsen Brewery, as I mentioned to you earlier, are based in Oslo in Norway and this brewery is part of the Akerhus Group which owns a number of bars and restaurants around Oslo and the main men in this company are Ole Johan Tollefsen, Bori Jensen and Tom Eric Andreasen. So the first brewery was part of a gastropub in Stortingsgata, which was just a very small operation, and you can still find this actually. This is the Amundsen Spicery, which is very close to the Oslo Town Hall. And the key man in getting this established was Tom Alfred Oimo, who had been a home brewer for a number of years, and he's still with the company actually. But the brewery expanded, and by 2015, they were producing around 200,000 litres of beer per year, and they've become quite established within Norway, having opened up a larger brewery up in Nydalen. So in 2016, the parent company purchased the property company Halketo Eindam and with this they also acquired the Björn Nordevine uh, Fjörton, if I'm pronouncing that in Norwegian correctly, the Björn uh, Nordevine Fjörton property which is in the Halketo area in the south of Oslo and this was turned into a 3,500 square metre brewery and their brewing there began late in 2016 with the new brewery capacity coming in at around 1 million litres of beer per year. The brewery equipment that they put in there came from Braucon in Germany, the canning and bottling lines both came from Italy and the total investment in this site was apparently 16 million Norwegian kronas which I guess is somewhere in the region of about 18 million euros, something like that. But the managing director of this brewery is Jeffrey Janssen van Vuren and Matthew Thomas and John Hudson are also involved in the daily running of the company as well and the artwork that you find on the cans which is of course very distinctive in the case of Amundsen this is designed by the American Peter John de Villiers so um, yeah a brewery like I said that are very well known for their uh, New England IPAs quite recently of course or well I suppose they've been doing it for a while their pastry stouts their uh, dessert stouts if you like have become really quite acclaimed as well I need to see if I can review one of those for you on the channel but if you're interested in Norwegian beer, like I say, Amundsen Bryggery are one of the better known breweries along with the likes of Lervig these days. I think Amundsen and Lervig are the ones who are, you know, accounting for a lot of the exported Norwegian craft beer. There's a lot of really good small breweries up there as well that I highly recommend that you check out. You've seen me review a few of those recently because I brought back some beers when I was up in Oslo. But a really nice brewery, this one, and one that you definitely need to check out. And I would recommend that you go and have a look at the Amundsen Spicery if you find yourself in Oslo City as well. 
very close to the uh, the town hall and I was there with Michiko back in, what was that, that was in April of 2019. So the next time I go, I will make sure I film a little out and about video for you there. I wasn't doing those at the time, which is unfortunate of course. But yeah, a really nice Norwegian brewery this one and one that you definitely want to check out. So that's all you need to know about Amundsen. If you want to learn more, check out the brewery website, follow them on Facebook and Instagram and of course you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see all the different beers that these guys have done. A very prolific brewery actually. So anyway, on to the English side of this beer then, to Wylam Brewery then. So Wylam has had a really kind of interesting history. Um, this brewery was founded by John Boyle and Robin Leighton in the small village of Wylam to the north of Newcastle back in 2000. Both men had taken early retirement. John had been a computer engineer and he met Rob who was a former sea captain but also an avid home brewer and basically what happened was John fixed Rob's PC which apparently took a very long time and apparently the payment that was agreed between John and Robin was five gallons of the vice beer that they'd both been drinking together. So Robin was really interested in barley wines, stouts and sours which weren't very popular at that time in the north of England and both he and John wanted to see these introduced into their local pubs. So they produced their first beer which was called The Landlord's Choice in August of 2000 and the beer became very popular through word of mouth. So Robin only remained within the company for about three years or so until 2003 but he managed to build a team of Ben Wilkinson, Christopher Lee and Lee Halworth who are still at the brewery today but John convinced his son to move back from Spain and take over the company. I believe his name's Matt but then they moved premises to Head and on Wall in 2006 and expanded their capacity slightly but at this point in time they were still very much quite a, a traditional brewery if that makes sense. But the company is now also co-owned by Rob Cameron and Dave Stone who were running uh, a nightclub in Newcastle after having had lengthy careers in the music industry and the two had just really grown tired of this and they decided that they wanted to move into beer so they basically bought um, two pubs. This was the Bridge Tavern and the Town Wall which quickly became Wylam's biggest customer. Later on they decided that they wanted to get more into the brewing world so they approached Wylam to see about buying into the company and uh, they were taken on board. So in 2016 um, they moved to the Palace of, Ex of Arts and Exhibition Park which was actually an old vehicle, a uh, military vehicle museum and it was scheduled for demolition before the building was saved by Freddie and Bruce Shepherd, who used to own Newcastle United. But this took, um, this this move to this new brewery took them two years to plan. They had over a hundred complaints about this building being converted into a brewery but they still managed to push through but now they've got it well equipped. It's got a 30 barrel brew house with a, with a smaller 15 barrel pilot kit and they've also got their brewery tap room there and it also holds concerts as well which is kind of interesting. So and that's a sort of off play of uh, I guess Rob and Dave's experience of the music industry. The current head brewer that they have is Ben Wilkinson and he's been with them since about a year after the brewery started, so since around 2001, and he also has a background in the pub industry and in recent times this increase in capacity that the breweries had has allowed him to experiment a lot with the New England IPAs and also sour beers which has really helped them increase their reputation with craft beer drinkers but they also brew some of their older beers as well which keeps their more kind of long-standing followers quite happy but they can produce up to 100 hectares liters of beer per day and uh, for a long time you actually couldn't get the Wylam beers outside of the northeast of England. I mean I tried the beers back in what would that have been 2015 so this was before they actually I think it was the Jake head that I reviewed on the channel back in 2015 and that was before any of this expansion kind of took place so I tried the the, the Wylam beers when they were just very very small and you couldn't even get them up in Glasgow uh, for example at, at Valhalla's Goat or anything so this the growth that uh, Wild and Brewery have undergone in the last few years is nothing short of kind of spectacular to be honest they're exporting their beers all across Europe these days and I think you can actually get them out in Japan and, uh, and Hong Kong and stuff like that now so if you're watching from over in Asia do make sure you try some of these Wild and Beers and probably they'll make their way over to North America at some point fairly soon as well but a brewery that are very highly regarded in England along with the likes of Cloudwater, Daya, Magic Rock, eh, Northern Monk, and there's a few others in there as well, Verd eh, Verdant. You know, Wylam are really one of the big beer, the big breweries when it comes to these hazy New England IPAs. Everyone goes wild when Wylam have got a new couple of beers coming out. So, um, yeah, a good place to start when it comes to English craft beer. And I would recommend that you try the, the Jake Head IPA and then try some of their newer 
uh, IPAs as well. But a very interesting brewery and it's cool to uh, be able to give you some more information on them. Incidentally, a big thank you to Rob from Hopscene for giving the articles to fill in some of the gaps on my uh, my knowledge about Wylam. So a huge thank you to him for uh, helping me extend those notes there. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about Wylam Brewery for the moment. Again, if you want to learn more, check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And of course, you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see all the different things that they've done. And uh, yeah, they're a very prolific brewery as well. But yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So as I mentioned to you at the start of the video, this one is a 7.5% double dry hopped New England IPA. It comes in um, this awesome looking can. You can see there at the top is the Wylam brewery symbol and at the bottom there is the Amundsen one. I don't know if you would say that that's a griffin, but there you can see someone's obviously going a little bit mental with the metal, as we like to say. It doesn't actually give you a description of this beer at all, but um, as I say, a double dry hops New England IPA at 7.5%. This one is a 440 milliliter can, which is a normal people measurement. I always complain about that when it comes to um, American beers and things like that. But um, yeah, let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then, released on the 22nd of November 2019 through the Tidfeli Sortiment in Seistenbolaget here in Sweden. Let's get it out. Oh, this one is going to be a very kind of bright pale yellow colour. There's still about a third of that in the can or something, but we'll just leave it at that for the moment. So um, yeah, as you can see and as you would kind of expect, this one's poured a lovely hazy colour. I mean, if we put the light through this, this one is definitely yellow. It looks a little bit like mango juice or something like that, to be honest with you. If I put my fingers behind the glass, there you can see there's very little in the way of transparency to this beer. There's a solid um, two-thirds finger of a frothy, I would say perfect white head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the, uh, the bottom of that head there. But, you know, overall, it looks pretty much exactly as you would expect from... Um, from a New England IPA. The Amundsen ones, from what I remember, always tend to be quite light in colour, probably just because of the different malts and things that these guys are using. But yeah, let's take a closer look at that aroma then and see how we get on. Oh yeah, so this one comes across, this wood beer comes across as really kind of nice and smooth. I mean, the malt base um, is, is really quite well balanced. You can definitely smell a little bit of that white bready wheaty sort of thing and it comes across as very light and very soft. There's a little bit of an oaty creaminess in there. You've got a little bit of a kind of biscuity quality to this beer as well. Um, but I mean the malt base for me compared to some of the other ones that I've come across, um, this one doesn't, it has compared to for example magic rock or something like that. The wheat does have a little bit of pungency to it, but not quite as much. Um, so yeah, really smooth malt base this one. It doesn't have the same, quite the same level of creaminess as you're going to come across from other New England IPAs as well. But that said, it still comes across as a lovely, lovely smelling beer actually. So thumbs up to Amundsen for the um, for the aroma here. The malt base comes across as very nice and very smooth. On the hoppy side of things then, um, definitely a nice kind of floral presence to the beer. It has a, um, it, it's the green side of the hops. It, it's got a good balance between the grassiness and the um, the floral qualities. I'd say it leans a little bit more towards the floral side of the things, and there's not really um, an earthiness to this beer. Sometimes you can get a little bit of earthiness out of these New England IPAs, depending, of course, on what hops have been used. But a lovely. Um, just a lovely smoothness to this beer. And the, the lighter grassiness that this beer has kind of plays into the malt base really well, actually. And of course, we know that both of these breweries are capable of doing some, you know, eight and a half, nine percent beasts uh, when it comes to the New England IPAs. But I've got a feeling this one might be more of a kind of easygoing, drinkable one, especially if it's only 7.5%. Well, we say only, but 7.5% is still substantial. You do get ones that are around 6.8 and things. But, um, yeah interesting aroma with this one. On the fruity side of things then, um, I've been trying to ponder exactly what's in there. I wouldn't be surprised if this is, uh, you know, there's a little bit of an orangey quality to this one, but mainly I want to say it's got a little bit of a tropical fruit as well. There's a little bit of a kind of mangoey, papaya type thing to this beer. You know, there's something, on one hand there is something that's a little bit distinctive about this beer, but on the other hand, 
um, there's also something that's a little bit more unusual. So I'm wondering if it's one of these new hops, like it could be like Jurillo or um, Idaho 7 is supposed to give you some really nice kind of tropical notes as well. Sabro is more like an orangey note. Um, so the, the, the aromas of the fruits are familiar obviously, but it's just the way everything's coming out is kind of unusual. I don't think, I would be very surprised if there was like Galaxy or something in this. Um, but the fruity notes in this beer come across as very soft and very juicy. I think there's a wee touch of orange to this one. Um, and there's a sort of pineapple -y, papaya, sort of apricot-y note to this beer. It's really very soft in terms of its tropical notes. Maybe even a little bit of mango, to be honest with you. Um, it's difficult to place. Um, it's there, there's a, there's a, there is a good level of complexity to that fruity note in this beer. But um, yeah, I think overall... It's fair to say, this beer generally, in terms of its aroma, is quite smooth and juicy um, in terms of the fruits. It's got a lovely kind of smoothness and lightness to the malt base, and you've got a good balance between some grassy and, uh, and more floral characteristics there as well. I really like how this beer is, um, is balanced together, so keep that in mind when you, uh, when you have a go at this one. I think this, th this beer does have a really nice, but still quite subtle aroma to it, actually. But thumbs up to both Amundsen and Wyland Brewery for... Um, for how, this, uh, for how the aroma of this one turns out. I'm curious to see how the double dry hopping comes out too, because I've always felt that with double dry hop beers, sometimes they can feel a little bit dusty and things like that in their mouthfeel. But without further ado, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. This one is the Incendiary Confusion, Confusion on Fire basically, from Amundsen Bravery in Oslo in Norway and uh, Wyland Brewery from Newcastle in England. Let's get stuck in. Slange, skull. Oh yeah, that is, to be quite frank, that is very different from the IPAs that I've had from either of these breweries before. And the thing that's really striking me about this one is the mouthfeel. This beer comes across as really um, very light, wet and drinkable. This is one of the lightest kind of double dry hopped uh, IPAs that I've ever come across, but I'll tell you something. It really is pretty damn nice. Um, so it's it, that that's really cool. I mean, I've had um, lots of beers from Amundsen. Most of them in recent times have actually been collaborations, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's been a really this is a really really interesting beer. I have to say. I'll tell you straight away, this gets a thumbs up from me. If you get the chance to try this one definitely do it. That's really different from um, a lot of the Wyland beers I've had before. Um, and it's it's the mouthfeel that really is different. There's nothing overly surprising about this beer with flavour profile. It's got things, a lot of things that you would expect, but it's just the way everything goes together with this. So yeah, um, yeah let's try and break this down a little bit. I'm going to put the rest of the beer in the glass just in case it kind of, and it doesn't look as if it's going to thicken up or anything. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that beer yeah, if, even if you look in the can, there's not more haze to it, because you know, I was wondering, could that have been sedimentation or something, but absolutely not. This beer is 100% just a bit lighter than the other things they've done before. Could there be a little bit of Pilsner malt in here, I wonder? Mm. But yeah, um, so let's start with this one then. Middle of your palate, you get this really nice... Um, kind of pale malty quality, that blankets the middle of your tongue and the further you go into the aftertaste you really can feel the middle of your palate just sort of drying out and crisping up a little bit. I want to say that it's um, a Pilsner malt. I do think there is maybe a little touch of Pilsner malt in this one although it feels a little bit smooth for Pilsner malt which is quite interesting at the same time but the malt base here is absolutely beautifully done. Um, I wouldn't have thought it's almost it's almost a little bit like a German Hellas or something to be honest with you it's it's that same level of kind of lightness and smoothness it really has a little bit of an almost laggerish quality to it which is, is is really interesting if you move into the center of your palate you can feel there is a little bit of an oaty creaminess um, further into the center of the tongue and then right in the center of the palate that's where you'll get a little bit of the kind of biscuity qualities out of this beer as well which is really nice so um yeah malt base is very simple but really different compared to what you're you're used to 
with almond. So I remember both of these breweries, um, a lot of the time, these beers are kind of like the Trillium ones in a lot of ways. The Amundsen beers and the, the Wylam ones, the wheat that they normally use in the malt base does have a little bit of a kind of bite to it, which is uh, which is interesting. It's got a little bit of pungency, but this is a very light, almost Hellas-like malt base in this beer. So it's it, it really is interesting. This Try this beer for yourself and see how you get on. I always like it when you get things like this where the brewery really just throw you a curveball and it's, it's different from the other stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate there is a wee bit of earthiness there, but as you come further forward you can feel it becomes a lot more kind of floral and spicy and aromatic and then round the very front curve of the tongue it's that little bit lighter. And, uh, and grassy. Um, it's Again, the beer is really well balanced between the grassy side of things and the floral side of it. Um, this one isn't too high in terms of IBUs, but we'll talk about that later. I think this one really leans towards the kind of um, grassy side of things, actually. This could have, you know, it could be something like Hallertau Blanc or, um, you know, um, Mandarina Bavaria or something that's in that, a combination of the two. There's there's something almost a little bit German and noble about this uh, about this IP. I mean, it reminds me of one or two of the things I've had from Frau Gruber um, in Bavaria in Germany, who are a very good IPA brewery, actually. Um, I, I really like this. This is probably one of my favourite beers that I've had from either of these, of these breweries that come to think of it. Yeah. So, fruity side of things then, as I always say, the fruity esters in a beer, they come out in that little oily bubble behind the front curve of your tongue. And again, this beer has some interesting things going on. So if you go to the back of your palate there, there is a little bit of a, kind of, there is a little bit of a, a darker, very slightly kind of almost grapefruity or passion fruity quality there, but it's very minimal actually. And um, as you move further forward from that, the beer I think it leans, it's got a little bit of a kind of mango-y quality, definitely some sort of papayas, um, apricots maybe, even a little bit of pineapple, something like that. Um, could this maybe be like Jurillo or something that's in here? I'm really not sure. I always like playing Guess the Hops with these beers. Um, I don't think, the orangey notes, there is a little bit of an orangey quality to this one further forward on the tongue as well. Um, but Sab, if it was Sabro, because the orangey quality in this, I don't think it's mosaic. I'd be quite surprised if it was mosaic that's in this one, um, but yeah, it doesn't come across as mosaic, and it's not it's not oily enough to be um, amarillo either. And azaka, could it be a bit of azaka actually? That would be another interesting one. Yeah, azaka might work. It's got a little bit of the the kind of tropical fruit complexity and also the oranges that you'd expect. Um, so yeah, I'm really not sure exactly what hops are in this one, but like I say, a little bit of a darker. Slightly grapefruity note at the back of that fruity part of the beer. As you move further forward, you get a little bit of a mango kind of papaya type thing out of this one. Maybe, I don't know if it's apricot, I think it, there could be a little bit of apricot in there, a little bit of pineapple or something like that. But as you come further forward towards the tip of the tongue, definitely some nice juicy oranges and a little bit of a... There's a, there is almost a wee touch of a lemon limey note just on the front tip of your tongue too, which is interesting. Centennial um, could be an option if it's lemony, and equinot if it's lime. Um, I'll take it, I think, from New Zealand is another option if it's lime. But um, those aren't prominent enough, I think, to be mainstay um, in the in the flavour. I mean, it could be two or three hops that are in this one, knowing Amundsen and Wylan, they tend to put two or three hops in when it comes to dry hopping and things. But the main point to take away is that this beer is just beautifully balanced. It's got The, the fruit leans towards the tropical side of things, but I do think there is a wee bit of a, an orangey quality in this one. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a Sabro, if it was Sabro and Jurillo or Sabro and like uh, Azaka or Azaka and uh, and Idaho 7 or something like that. This is a really interesting beer and it's, as I say it's probably this is probably one of my favourite IPAs that I've had from either of these breweries to be quite honest and with Wylam in particular I've tried a lot of really good stuff from them that's been very impressive. Amundsen I've had some very good beers from as well. The Space Tiger is probably the best IPA I've had but to me this one just hits a lot of spots. It ticks a lot of boxes for me and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. It gets a thumbs up from me. So um, yeah, the thing to say about this, as I mentioned, is that it's this is quite a light, drinkable um, 
New England IP. It's definitely got a little bit of that German smoothness and drinkability to it. So that's probably why it ticks a lot of boxes for me. As the further you go into the aftertaste with this one, you get some of the nice floral, spicy notes, but you've also got a little bit of crispness, that kind of almost Pilsner malty quality in the malt base as well but a beautiful beer this and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this one again no two doubts about that um, in terms of the mouthfeel um, mid-bodied I'd say bottom end of mid-bodied to be honest carbonation is kind of smooth but it gives you a little bit of crispness at the same time you've got a good little bit of a uh, um, you've got a good little bit of hoppy bitterness to this beer. I think you're talking maybe about 40 IBUs, something like that. Maybe a little bit less. It's not going to blow the head off you in terms of bitterness anyway. Um, lovely smoothness to the malt base. A level of crispness in there as well. A wee touch of biscuity sweetness in the middle of your palate as well. But a lovely kind of juicy fruity note to this one. That um, It does dry out a little bit, um, but... It really gives you a lovely juiciness on the beer too. You can feel with this one that you've got a little, you can feel a little bit of the dustiness from the dry hopping in the front of your palate. You can feel that a little bit around the edge of your tongue and towards the back of the fruity side of the beer. But you know, overall, um, the way everything goes together in this is just really, really nice. So a very light, drinkable New England IPA, this one. Both breweries, of course, are very capable within this style, but they have pulled off something here that is a little bit quirky and a little bit different. It's almost got a bit of the drinkability like a German Hellas or something like that. I really like how this one has uh, has turned out. So big thumbs up to both Amundsen Brewery and Wylam Brewery for this one. This is this is a beer that you should definitely check out just for the quirkiness factor and, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it on that basis as well. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. The Incendiary Confusion, um, a 7.5% double dry hopped hazy New England, whatever you want to call it, IPA from Amundsen Brewery in Oslo up in Norway and Wylam Brewery from Newcastle in England. Been really cool to review this one for you. So as always, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from both of these breweries too, and we'll be returning to them at some point fairly soon. Thank you again for watching, and I will catch you guys very soon. Make sure you check out my social media, and make sure you have a go at this beer as well. Probably the most interesting one I've had from both of these breweries in quite a little while actually, so make sure you check out for yourself. Until the next time, thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys very soon. Slanju, Skull, cheers.